Could you give us the title of your speech, please? Speech, Freedom and Responsibility. Freedom and Responsibility. Thank you. Please help me welcome Doug Crocker. He'll be giving his second speech, five to seven minutes for our timer. Thank you, Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, if we have any guests, the First Amendment to our Constitution contains these familiar words. Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. It is a most precious right that we all enjoy here in the United States. But this right is, of course, not without limits. Certain speech is not protected by the First Amendment. Incitement, slander, fraud, to name a few. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. There are moral and ethical limits. Lying, misleading, insulting, embarrassing. There are also audience constraints, appropriateness. Political correctness was appropriateness in its early days. We all wanted to be polite, respectful, and not offend anyone. So we have a responsibility to exercise our freedom of speech within such limits to be legal, ethical, and effective. I recently heard a CNN host defend big tech's shutting down of the accounts of some conservative voices, calling it damage control. And he said, freedom of reach is not the same as freedom of speech. My first thought was, he's just rationalizing an abuse of power. Then I thought the idea may have some merit. In social media worldwide dynamics, the yelling fire in a crowded theater, is it now a bigger theater? Has speech with greater reach created more responsibility? Maybe. But controls over social media can create threats to speech that is necessary, even if it's unpopular. If we take political correctness, enrich it with strong ideology and orthodoxy, empower it with social media, you get cancel culture. Cancel culture is political correctness with teeth threatening real harm and creating real fear of speaking out. Now take cancel culture, empower it with activist controlled social media platforms and you get a real threat of real suppression. The fog of events over the last year, the pandemic, the summer riots, sparked by the George Floyd killing, the election, the riot and break-in at the Capitol. It all brought new focus on the, potent, uh, on the potency of language. We hear a lot about incitement, insurrection, sedition. I think language was also on trial somewhat in this last impeachment. And as we hear government talking about new restrictions in the name of keeping peace, we could easily go from limiting reach for damage control to real threats of real tyranny. There have been dark days for freedom of speech that we've managed to overcome. The Alien and Sedition Acts, McCarthyism, the Wall Street Journal had a recent opinion piece on speech and sedition, and it ended with, America's leaders should reach for the country's best traditions, 
not its worst. But there is a real danger of a vicious circle, starting with underlying unresolved issues, say unequal access to power, unequal protection under law, under law. People speak out and see no results, a breakdown of trust in government and other institutions, frustration, inflammatory speech, and then violence, and then crackdown by, by government, blaming speech for incit incitement of the violence. Crackdown leads to more violence as the liberty to speak out is lost, which in turn leads to more crackdowns and on and on. But what happens to civic dialogue that could have moved us from resolving the underlying issues? We lose, we all lose. So fellow Toastmasters, keep speaking and please keep speaking out responsibly by choosing your words carefully and courageously by speaking with substance and conscience. In this way, Toastmasters can help our nation reach for its best traditions. Madam Toastmaster.